Aloha and welcome. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going to go across the sea to Portland, Oregon to talk with attorney Eric Kodish about the payment uh, Paycheck Protection Program. Eric is a partner and shareholder with the law firm of Lane Powell. The COVID-19 pandemic has been the impetus for the creation of new areas of legal practice. One being the Paycheck Protection Program or PPP as it's called. As a business and tax lawyer, Eric has found himself in the forefront of PPP law, advising clients and counsel on how to travel this new road. Now we got a lot of questions to ask Eric. Uh, we may not get to all of them. We may not get to all the answers, but Eric has graciously prepared and we will circulate a PowerPoint presentation along with this program uh, that discusses a lot of these issues. Now, Eric, Welcome. Uh, my first question is, uh, how are you in Oregon? How's everything going? We are doing well. Oregon is in the process of reopening, so that is going well. I actually saw people sitting in a restaurant and eating. It was a strange <laughs> sight. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. Where, when will we get back to, that, to normal? Uh, well, what is normal? But, okay, what is the PPP? Let's, let's talk about that and briefly tell me what it is. I think most people have a general idea, but to me, it's very complex. Yeah, no, and yeah, happy to be here. And thank you very much for inviting me. Um, so um, fundamentally, the, the PPP is a program that was added to the Small Business Act by the CARES Act. And fundamentally, it's a way for the government to provide funds for a business's key operational expenses, which are payroll, mortgage interest, rent, and utilities, for about eight weeks of operations at the pre-COVID-19 level. And, and the key is it's called a loan, but it's structured as a forgivable loan. So it, it's really meant to be a grant, but to make the whole thing work, the, the federal government is running the money through the banks. So if you get money from a bank, that's a loan, and then um, you get the loan forgiven as if it were a grant. Wow, and, and we have some uh, some parts of your present, of your of your uh, presentation uh, that we can put up on the screen. The first screenshot would be uh, kind of a brief description of the, uh, you know, what the PPP is. So uh, that would be uh, the first one to put up from the studio. It's up, okay. And that will give you some idea of what the background is uh, about the start of the PPP. And how much can a business borrow under the PPP? That's uh, the, next, next, the next screenshot. And, and so the amount that can be borrowed, uh, it's um, two and a half times your 2019 um, average monthly payroll cost. Now here, payroll cost is a uh, specially defined term. So payroll costs are, cash compensation capped at 100,000 per year. So if you have an employee who makes over 100,000, you can only take into account their monthly payroll for 100,000, but it includes self-employment income. So if you're, you know, if you're a partner in a partnership or uh, you have your own sole proprietorship and you don't actually get um, payroll, you still get that. Then there's non-cash benefits with no cap. Uh, so far, this, the, the SBA has seemed to limit this to employer contributions for healthcare and retirement. And then uh, state, uh, state and local taxes on wages. So the main one there would be unemployment insurance. Well, it's kind of broad then. I mean, various areas that are covered. And, and you know, what can these funds uh, be used for? I mean, is it, can it be used? Does it have to be used for all those things? Or uh, can it be used for different things? What, how does it work? So the way the statute works is it gives you seven allowed uses of the fund. So you can use it for payroll costs, uh, costs related to the continuation of group healthcare benefits uh, uh, during periods of paid, uh, paid leave, sick leave, medical or family leave, um, and insurance benefits. Those kind of were always included in payroll costs. Then mortgage interest, rent, utilities. Those are very important. 
But then in addition, you can use it for any kind of interest payment, even interest that isn't on a mortgage. Um, and you can use it to refinance. A lot of businesses at the beginning, there was a thought that the faster money would be these um, emergency injury disaster loans or EDLs, which had existed uh, before the CARES Act. So you have seven allowed uses of the money, but um, the only, you only get um, forgiveness for four uses. And so the, the four uses, um, you only get forgiveness for you know, using, for, to the extent you use the money in what they always call the covered period. Um, and there's a little uh, confusion there because the covered period was originally eight weeks from when you got the loan. But thanks to um, a law that was just signed, in, you know, that President Trump signed on Friday, the Paycheck Protection Program Flexibility Act, businesses can now actually get um, 24 weeks to, to spend the money. So you get credit and forgiveness for spending these things up to 24 weeks. Um, and it's, um, you get, the, you get um, forgiveness credit to the extent you pay it on payroll costs, broadly defined as well as when you were applying for the loan, mortgage interest, um, rent, or utilities. Um, the mortgage interest, the rent, and utilities all have to be in accordance with agreements that I think, uh, if I remember correctly, had to be in place by February 15th, 2020. The, uh, the PPP funds can be used for more than just paychecks. Uh, it covers really a broader number of categories, and it looks like it's meant to help people. That, that sounds good. Help, help businesses. Absolutely. It's meant to cover the, you know, basically your key expenses, which are, you know, if you're, you know, your key expenses as a business will be payroll, rent, mortgage, interest, and utilities. The one thing it doesn't cover is supplies. Okay. And it's meant to keep businesses open, it sounds like. Is that, is that, was, the, that was the intent, I guess, yeah. It's, it's meant to keep businesses open, and more importantly, as the name implies, it's meant to protect paychecks. It's meant to ensure that businesses don't lay off um, their workers. So it's kind of here, you know, um, it, it's basically this understanding that because of the COVID-19 um, pandemic, uh, you know, things are going to be shutting down. You know, you're not going to be getting as much revenue. Well, your first thing when that happens is you're going to lay people off. So it's the government coming in and saying, okay, I'm going to give you some money that will cover eight weeks of expenses. So now you can kind of operate at normal levels for eight weeks. Now, they they moved it to 24 weeks because people have been slow in reopening, but, but the basic idea is um, there's this money you're going to get. It's gonna kind of cover you at 100% operations for um, for eight weeks. Maybe you can't be at 100%, so you know, maybe it'll take you longer. But the idea would be is that during that eight weeks, you're still able to make money. And so you can start building this reserve. So when, the, so when you run out of the PPP money, you now have the reserve you built plus new money coming in. And it, it basically is bridging us from this pandemic to you know, kind of a happier, healthier time when the economy is reopened. And uh, I, I've heard about the PPP for a while. And I mean, is it, is it, is it still open to apply or is it too late or, or what, what can be done? It is not too late. I've seen reports of about a, um, about a hundred billion dollars still left unspent. Um, I mean, the main thing was is that you know th this started off with about three hundred forty nine billion, I believe, and then they added another three hundred some billion to it. Um, there, you know, and the Paycheck Protection Forgiveness Act that was just passed would indicate that um, new loans can still happen. So there still must be money out there to to, to uh, for business to get. So if you haven't applied. It's not too late. And what type of businesses can qualify for the PPP? I think we got a slide for that too. And and basically, it's any business or I mean, you know, what I would say is there are three main categories: any business or charity with not more than five hundred employees. Um, so so it's mainly meant for small businesses. But then um, even if you don't satisfy that if you satisfy an employee-based or revenue-based standard that the SBA has always had based on your industry code, you can qualify. And then the, uh, another big one is the SBA announced that you can also come in under what they've always had for general SBA loans as their alternative size standard. And that means you have tangible net worth of not more than 15 million. 
an average net income um, after federal income taxes um, of uh, for the last two fiscal years that averaged not more than five million. And I've worked with a lot of clients who have well over 500 employees, but fit within that alternative size standard. So there's kind of various qualifications, and it it does it does sound like it's looking for businesses that are maybe not huge, but I mean still substantial, mm -hmm. and 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 to try to keep them alive during this strange period. Yeah, absolutely. And and no, we I mean we have definitely worked with clients now. The amount of the loan is capped. No one you know, is capped at ten million dollars. Um, and, you know, for okay. most, you know, it's, it's going to be, you know, you'd have to have a pretty high payroll um, in 2019 in order to be able to get to 10 million, but some, but some can get there because with this alternative size standard, you could have a much larger, you know, I think one of the big things we've seen is the um, businesses that have um, significant debt, so they don't have tangible net worth over 15 million, and it's easy to get under uh, that 5 million average um, income before tax and and who, right. who who should apply then i mean should just just anybody is this is this open is, is that what your opinion would be just yes if, everyone if need it? absolutely everyone sh if you qualify you should apply there is really no reason not to now the that said uh there is it's basically anyone who's affected by the pandemic so we, you know, there are definitely businesses that, you know, and you know, there'll always be businesses that actually benefit from the pandemic. If you were in the business of home delivery, then your business has probably skyrocketed. Um, so, so one of the keys is, is that you have to be able to certify in good faith that current economic condition, current economic uncertainty makes this loan request necessary to support the ongoing operations of the applicant. Oh, okay. Uh, Eric, we are going to take a short break and then be right back. And the first thing I'm going to ask you is, uh, is who cannot apply for PPP? But thank you. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I am Mark Schlav, host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program, talking with Eric Kodish in Portland, Oregon, about the Paycheck Protection Program, the PPP. And uh, last time we left off, I mean, we're talking, we've got a lot of questions. And fortunately, Eric, you've prepared a uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation that we'll be able to distribute later on with maybe more answers and more discussion. Uh, but right now, tell me, who cannot apply for PPP? So the um, the key idea is the the ones that cannot apply would be businesses um, that are too big, uh, you know that that you know don't meet um, the, any of the uh, size standards. Um, also, businesses that cannot make the um, uncertainty certification. I think that's, you know, one of the big ones is, it, you know, it, it, you really have to, you don't have to necessarily be negatively impacted right now. So you could be a lag in a lagging industry uh, indicator industry where you're fine now, but your pipeline looks horrible. So in the future, you'll have an impact. The key is that you just have to have uncertainty. But if your business is booming now, then you don't, you won't be able to. And then what the statute will say is that, um, even if you meet the necessary size standards and you have the necessary uncertainty, um, you cannot do it if you're engaged in any activity that is illegal under federal, state, or local law. So a big one there will be uh, cannabis businesses, even if legal um, under uh, in Hawaii, it's, it, it, um, it, it would not be legal under federal law. Also, if you're a household employer, so you can't get a PPP loan, um, you know, if if you if it's for nannies and things like that. Um, 
there's an issue that you, uh, if 20% or more of the owners are, you know, have had criminal issues and all the, it's summarized on the slide, or if you uh, have defaulted or are delinquent in some other loan guaranteed by the SBA um, uh, in the last seven years and it caused a loss to the federal government. So that's the key is that you had to actually have caused a loss. Okay, and, and so you, you gotta make a statement, that's true. You gotta be something that is lawful. Uh, uh, let me ask you, how about, you know, how about if I'm just an employee owner of a business, can I apply for a PPP? So you can't, but the business can. And when the business does it, it can, um, it can apply using the, um, you know, taking into account what the you as an employee owner made, whether, you know, if, if it's a, if, if you're an, you know, employee shareholder of an S corporation, then you have a wage. And if it's a sole proprietorship or a partnership, you get to include the self-employment income in the payroll costs that are the basis of the loan and in the payroll costs for which you get forgiveness. And so you got to explain that, I guess, in your application and make it clear what your position is. And in that respect, where, where mm -hmm. do you apply? Where, where do you apply for the PPP? Your bank. Uh, you contact your local bank. Make sure they're set up to take the PPP loans. These, um, any of the major banks are also small regional banks. Um, this has been such a big program that you know uh, Congress made it very, very easy for banks to become um, eligible and um, uh, to make these loans, and they've done an effective job of it. And, and they're interested in doing it, is that correct? I mean, the banks are into it. Absolutely, because there are, you know, fees um, uh, that they get. Um, okay. They, you know, there's, there is a 1% interest charge. That's, you know, probably not enough for them. But the main thing is, is, you know, this is not a time where the banks want to be lending money uh, to most businesses, but here's a, a loan they can make that is, fully guaranteed by the federal government so they know they're not going to lose money and you know they can collect normal fees from on it okay and in that regard then what is the role of the small business administration with respect to the ppp so the S small business administration guarantees the loan uh, they make the final decision on what portion of the loan is forgiven the sba is the one that pays the bank uh back the forgiven amount out. That's incredibly important. Um, they issue guidance about the loan. So, you know, uh, the application for the loan is their form. So is the forgiveness application. They issued now 16 um, um, intermediary final or interim final rules. So there's lots of guidance and, and, a, and a, a, a bunch of uh, frequently asked questions. I mean, overall, they basically oversee the whole process. And I guess the banks, what you're saying is the banks like that because it gives them some security. Uh, and hope, hope that they, I mean, well, they, they know they're going to get paid back. Exactly. It's the loan is, you know, is fully guaranteed. So, so even if a part of the loan isn't forgiven and the uh, borrower defaults, the SBA has guaranteed the loan. Okay. So, now so wanna, the banks know they're getting their money. And, and, and what are, I want to kind of jump ahead a little bit. What are the basic terms of a PPP loan? That's another slide we have. So the basic terms, now this first one, uh, it's uh, for anyone who got a loan before June 5th, um, it's a two-year note at 1% interest with no guarantees. For loans after June 5th, because of, of the Payroll Protection Program Flexibility Act, um, it is a five-year loan. Um, again, since most or all of it's going to be forgiven, it's, you know, the, whether it's two years or five years isn't as important. Um, payment Payments under, you know, most uh, originally payments were to start um, after six months with monthly payments um, amortized, but the Payroll Protection Program uh, Flexibility Act actually makes it so that payments do not begin until you've gotten um, word on how much is forgiven. So essentially, you you get the you you take this loan out, you have no payments until you find out what part of the loan is forgiven, and then. Um, if you get 100% forgiveness, then the entire loan is forgiven. What's a little unclear is, um, 
I believe that you still owe the 1% interest. So, so 1% interest will accrue the entire time you've had the loan. So even if it's 100% forgiven, you have to pay that. The uh, most recent um, SBA guidance on how forgiveness will work indicated that the SBA was paying the banks the um, accrued interest. So we'll have to see how it actually works. But I think everyone should just expect that you, know, you got this great loan, um, essentially free money, but you have to pay one percent. One percent, yeah. Um, and again, if you could, you know, if you if you do the whole thing in less than a year, then it's you know less than one percent. Obviously, it's one percent annualized. Well, that, well, that's I mean that's a really good deal. And and I mean, in order to get your PPP loan approved, is there a basic plan, or how, how do you move forward to do that? Yeah, it's minimal. I mean, it's um, the the you know the PPP loans are designed to be easily accessible by small businesses without attorneys, without advisors. Um, there's a very simple uh, loan application that's um, available on the SBA's website. Every bank has it, and then you provide the documents to substantiate. Now, mainly since um, you know uh, since it's all based on 2019 payroll. You're basically going to give your um, your quarterly, you know, right now you already are doing quarterly reports for your payroll, uh, the Form 941. So you've done all of those for 2019. You just provide a copy. Um, if you're dealing with um, a self-employed owner, well, then they've got a different form that will have uh, their self-employment income. So you just have to show that. But it's all numbers from 2019 that... Um, have for returns that have already been filed, or maybe you know you're on extension still. But uh, for your 2019 return, you can get it for your self-employment income. Uh, the main thing I've heard is I've not heard people complain about access. It's it's been relatively easy to get these loans. Well, I mean, it, it sounds very good. Uh, now let, let's go to the next step. About you know what do I need to know about forgiveness of PP loans? what can and cannot be forgiven. We've already talked a little bit about non-payroll expenses, but I'd like you to get, kind of review those, those issues, so. Absolutely, so as originally passed, the, the program was um, meant to cover key operational expenses, so your payroll, your mortgage interest, your rent and utilities, for about eight weeks of operations at pre-COVID-19 levels. Now they extended it to 24 weeks because people aren't operating at um, pre-COVID-19 levels, and they need a little bit more time to incur the costs. Um, but the idea would be is that, you know, um, you have these expenses, you're going to have them anyway for, you know, again, payroll, mortgage, interest, rent, and utilities. And then, um, you know, as you incur them, it, it, you know, keep in mind that your loan was, you know, two and a half times um, average monthly payroll. And that was basically going to be enough to cover about 100% sorry, going to be enough to cover eight weeks. Well, now that you have 24 weeks, you'd have to have a real, you know, you know, you know, shutdown. I mean, you'd have to be operating at, you know, for an entire 24 week period at one, less than one third, your pre COVID-19 levels, um, in order to not be able to get a hundred percent forgiveness and you'll still get something. You know, it, it really sounds promising. And, and I mean, to you, I, I hear you saying it, it's uh, easy to make these applications. Uh, I'm not a tax lawyer. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it, does, it does seem, um, well, like I need some help if I'm going to do it. I mean, what, what, what uh, uh, you know, the rules seem to change too. I read, you know, on your w website that there's like every so often there's uh, changes. What's, what's all that about? And do you have any concerns about it? Sure. So, you know, I, what I would say is, you know, at its core, things have stayed the same. Um, and the SBA actually, I mean, their loan forgiveness application is, you know, it's not that it's easy. It's, it's fairly difficult, but the SBA does a very good job of providing step-by-step -step guidance on what is the number you're supposed to put in, you know, and kind of building to things. I, I would say that, you know, the general rules that are applicable to most businesses are well-established, but you know, questions arise or keep arising kind of on the periphery and at the edges of, well, what about, you know, this or what about that? You know, a, a good example would be, um, you know, you, you had 
at the beginning of this, companies laid off workers because, um, because there was no business and they were scared. And at the same time, the federal government stepped in and really improved un unemployment benefits, um, you know, extended the period, but also provided, I think, like an extra $600 a week. So then businesses started getting their PPP loans and they started going back to their employees and started saying, hey, you know what, we've got this money now. So even though we're not getting money from customers, we can still put you back on payroll. And of course, for lower wage employees, the response was, I'm doing better on unemployment. So I don't want to come back. Um, and, and that created an issue that um, people were struggling with getting their employees to come back. And so rules were designed and changed to be able to say to the employer, okay, if your employee won't come back, you won't be dinged. And that takes extra rules and extra complication, but it's there to solve a problem that businesses otherwise would have. And, and you know, you, you have gotten into this because of COVID-19. Uh, it's a new area of law for you. You're learning, I think, as you go to a certain extent too, um, what other business opportunities have come up and, uh, you know, with, with respect to this? I mean, you no, know, this has been, I mean, you know, there's all, all kinds of opportunities that are arising from this PPP loan. I mean, businesses have the opportunity to continue full operations to start, despite a drop in customers and revenues. Um, advisors like me have an opportunity to assist with questions um, and issues that always arise from a new regime. It's been an, an excellent way for me to meet, um, you know, you know, me to have, you know, to gain new customers and new clients, but also to kind of strengthen my relationship with my existing um, customer, you know, the existing clients of my law firm of being able to say, you know, yes, we can help with this brand new thing. Um, banks have this opportunity to continue normal lending operations using loans guaranteed by the government. And perhaps most importantly, I get now personally, I get the opportunity to give a presentation for a Hawaiian audience, which <laughs> I have never had the chance to do. All right. Well, that, that's great. And uh, Eric, I want to thank you. And I want to close by uh, putting up a couple slides uh, that refer to your law firm and how to contact you and maybe how to get more information you know, you have a very good website uh, and we are gonna be putting up um, your uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation along with this program, uh, various links and circulating it uh, within, within the Hawaiian community and I hope within the wider legal community, but th thank you uh, very much, Eric Kodish. Uh, I appreciate this uh, update on the PPP and uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes. And aloha to everybody. And thank you for joining us today.